Hello and welcome to our session on using geriatric simulation to teach geriatric sensitivity. Due to the rapidly increasing number of elderly people in the United States and around the world, numerous opportunities are arising for professionals in geriatrics and gerontology. Now, according to the Bureau of Labor Statistics, the number of elderly people in the United States will be at its highest over the next decade and will continue to grow. This will ensure a sustained growth in careers in geriatric and gerontology. And if you look at the list of the top 10 skills you need for working in a nursing home, most of them involve direct patient care. We believe that better care will be provided when workers are sensitive to what the patients are going through. So if you have your students walk in the shoes of an older adult, they're much likelier to provide more appropriate care because they'll understand the challenges that aging patients have. Now, there are studies that show the efficacy of wearable geriatric simulation experiences. And there was one study done in Germany at the Julius Maximilian University. 83% of students were able to empathize with old age or aging very well after going through a simulation experience themselves. And 95% of the participants had a better understanding of physical conditions of aging after they wore an age simulation suit. So those are very significant statistics. So here's the Real Care Geriatric Simulation Suit. It comes with all the things you see on the screen there, the visual impairment glasses, the walker, and all the different restrictors, uh, vests, and so forth that all work together to um, help your students feel the common physical effects of aging. When they go through that experience physically, they're gonna um, feel like a visual impairment. So there's six different visual impairment classes that are included. Restricted range of motion means it's much more difficult to move on, a, on just a, a normal basis. Decreased mobility, they can't, they can't move uh, as much or as easily. Stoop posture, so much like osteoporosis is felt. Loss of sensation in the hands, so you've got that the compromised feeling of touch. Uh, you're certainly going to be a lot more stiff. You're, you can't be as strong. You can't lift as much, perhaps. All of these things come together and work to make you feel tired and fatigued. Uh, students will see themselves much differently when they put the age simulation suit on because it's going to change their sense of body image. Their body doesn't react to movement in the normal way. They'll feel uh, probably a sense of, uh, out of being out of balance, somewhat confused. So all of those things uh, work together for that simulation experience. So when you put the simulator on, it's a good idea to pair students up um, because it goes, it's, it's a much easier if you have one student assisting another, uh, putting some of the pieces on. And uh, the age simulation uh, suit comes with instructions for use that you see here on the screen. So it tells you what order to put the items on in and how to put it on so that um, it's, it's very efficient and then you go ahead and you use the walker and you put those glasses on and then it takes you through uh, some different tasks so students can see what it's like to move once they're fully immersed in the simulator. But it's always a good idea to have your students pair up in order to uh, be efficient for getting the suit on each other. So we, the geriatric simulator is very uh, versatile. It can be used in a lot of different settings. We see it used in high schools, uh, many times in CNA uh, certification courses. Sometimes it's used in high schools for career exploration and health science. We see fax teachers using it to teach aging across the lifespan. Certainly post-secondary courses, anybody in allied health that someday may be working with an aging patient would certainly find a benefit. Uh, CNAs though are, are, have the greatest benefit because they are going right into facilities that work with uh, geriatric or aging patients. So understanding what those patients are going through is key. We've also seen some nursing home facilities purchase the suit and use it for um, onboarding new hires um, on a regular basis. Um, so that's just part of their in-service training. We've also seen this used in some public health organizations for um, and community education to do some some good education on, on um, aging and geriatric concerns. So there's a lot of different ways that you can use a suit like this once you purchase it. Now it does come with curriculum. There are uh, nine different lessons 
and a lot of different topics. And we're going to show you the topics on, on the next slide. But there are nine to 13 hours of teaching time. And you can choose um, how deep you want to go into each of the lessons, whether you want to do all, all of those hours or if you want to uh, shorten that up some. But it's very customizable. Uh, you can uh, use the slide presentations to deliver uh, the information. Uh, if you are in a hybrid or remote teaching model, you can use a lot of the activities and information in these lessons um, can be put online in, in your LMS systems where students can have access to some of that information at home as well. Also, it does come with pre and post summative assessment so you can measure objectively all of the knowledge gained over the life of the, the, the course and all of the lessons. So here are the lesson topics that you'll see with the geriatric simulator. It starts out with a career exploration lesson. So your students really learn about all the opportunities that there are out there in geriatrics and gerontology. Then we move into some very um, specific um, areas in each lesson. So we'll have a specific lesson all about visual impairment. Then we'll do one on mobility. Um, there'll be um, arthritis or impact of aging on bones and joint. We'll do a hearing loss. Uh, cognitive changes. Then the fully immersive lesson comes near the end where it's the geriatric experience. And then we have one more lesson after that that we call Amazing Aging, where students uh, actually do a research project on um, geriatric or aging adults that are doing amazing things in their in their uh, older years. So lots of lots of good comprehensive uh, activities and things in the different lessons. So I'm gonna give you a highlight of each of those lessons. Lesson number one is again, where you do that career exploration in geriatrics and gerontology. Uh, students will receive a list of some of the potential jobs um, that are available, but uh, they find one that they'd like to do a research project on and they do things like uh, looking into educational requirements, you know, salary, duties, the outlook for the job, and then the information is shared with their classmates. It's a five minute presentation. So you can see how your students would be exposed to a wide variety and array of occupations uh, in that area through lesson number one. In lesson number two, it focuses specifically on visual impairments. There's six different conditions that um, they get to experience themselves, glaucoma, macular degeneration, cataracts, diabetic retinopathy, retinal detachment and retinitis pigmentosa. And they'll be able to put those glasses on and they try the different conditions. Um, and then they have to do a series of daily tasks. And then they record their thoughts on how this would impact their daily life as an older adult. So this is a great uh, lesson to have some of those aha moments. Lesson number three is all about declining mobility due to aging. And this, um, in this lesson, it's going to use different parts from the geriatric simulation suit that focuses on declining mobility. So there are simulation activities and research projects that um, on how to slow the decline, how to use assistive devices to help, and also a uh, typical um, way mo mobility uh, declines as you age. And you can even find things like canes, walkers, and, and crutches, things like that for free as donations or low cost in thrift stores, or you could even get some donations from students. But you could bring some of those items in and have students see what it's like to ambulate using them. Lesson number four is all about how bones and joints are impacted by aging. And in this lesson, um, it involves a simulation experience with both hands and feet feeling arthritic and doing activities of daily living. So we accomplish this by taping together the thumb and forefinger on your dominant hand and binding three fingers on the other hand um, to restrict movement and find motor skills. Popcorn kernels are placed in socks and then shoes to simulate foot pain associated with poor circular, circulation, neuropathy and arthritis. And then another simulation activity is where you put on gloves filled with unpopped popcorn kernels to dull the finger's ability, also simulating arthritis. Now, if you've purchased a, a second kit of ours, our sensory impairment kit, there is an arthritis simulator in that that you can use in lieu of the, these do-it-yourself ones. But um, it's, it, this is another easy way for you to be able to um, do some of those DIY simulation experiences that are part of the, the lesson on aging bones and joints. We do have a hearing loss lesson. Lesson five focuses on that common hearing impairments as we age. They're gonna learn about causes of hearing loss and then go through a simulation experience. Uh, if you've purchased our sensory impairment kit, you do have that 
that uh, hearing impairment simulator. If not, in the lesson, an alternative that is a low cost is using earplugs and noise canceling headphones to do the activities in lesson five, all focused around hearing loss. Lesson six, we get into some of those cognitive changes due to aging. So we talk about uh, common age-related cognitive changes that occur in the body and in the brain. Uh, students will participate in a brief dementia sensitivity simulation where they're visually, auditorily, and sensorily compromised. And then they have to do some things and they see what that's like. And then they have some activities that they, that they fill out um, um, debriefing after the experience. And then you get to that fully geriat, fully immersive geriatric experience where it begins with an empathy self-assessment. Students take a look at um, their own empathy skills and uh, they identify some areas maybe that they can improve upon. And then that's when uh, students will uh, be paired up and they'll get that full experience by putting the suit on. And they'll also uh, choose one of the pairs of glasses and they'll have that walker. And then in the lesson, they complete some of the tasks like uh, opening a pill bottle, trying to dress button a shirt, pour a glass of water from a pitcher, try to pick up some coins or tie your shoes, comb your hair, put on a belt and many more things. And then students finish the lesson with a reflection experience on how the simulation has changed the way they see and, see and feel about older adults. Um, and then there's some more uh, activities after that, but that's the main focus of the, the fully immersive lesson. And then lesson eight is all about amazing aging. And this is where they do um, learn. There's a lecture uh, all about uh, how you live a long and healthy life. After that, then they're challenged with finding an example of an aging or person who's doing some amazing things um, in their advanced years. And they do a short presentation and share that with the class. So there, and there's lots of good examples of that as well. So we want um, the lesson to end on a positive note. Um, you can live healthy and vibrant well into your, your senior years. And we wanna show students good examples of that and give them some, some ideas on things they can do in their own lives to ensure their health long-term. So there's a lot of creative ways that you can use the geriatric simulator to enrich your program or to take the experience even further. So we're gonna give you a few ideas now for using the geriatric simulator in your classroom. First, one of the best practices we recommend is to use it by setting up stations. Now you can use the geriatric simulation suit even if you only have one. And here's what we recommend that you do. You set up station one as a fully immersive suit, uh, fully immersive experience station where you have the Jerry suit, take out one of the visual impairment glasses in the walker and have that station um, be where they work through all of the things in that lesson. The next station two would be visual impairment. You still have five pairs of visual impairment glasses left. There's a total of six in the case. So take that out and set up that station and students can uh, rotate into that station and do all of the simulation experiences for the visual impairment lesson. In station three, it's all about the hearing loss and impairment. And that's where you could have your cotton balls, your noise canceling headphones, or the hearing impairment simulator if you've purchased that from us. And then you can work through those simulation experience activities at that station. Station four can be your arthritis station. Um, in the lesson, they give you all of the activities that go along with the gloves, the popcorn, and the tape that I spoke about. Or if you've purchased our sensory impairment kit and you have that arthritis simulator, you could also set that up at a separate station and, and it can students can go through all those arthritis activities. Station five can be mobility. So that's where if you can find some additional walkers or crutches or canes, anything like that, that you can uh, set up at the mobility station, have your students take uh, turns ambulating and doing some of that kind of thing. Uh, that could be station five. And you can even have station six, which we're calling research. That is where in that last amazing aging lesson, they're gathering the information on the internet all about um, uh, to prepare that example of a good, uh, older adults doing marvelous things into their aging years. So you can see how you could set up all the stations, have uh, maybe students pair up, and then as they get through each station, they rotate on to the next. And this would keep all of your students busy at the same time. It's a great way to do classroom management if you just have one suit. If you're fortunate to have more than one suit or to have a few of our other wearable geriatric simulators, like the sensory impairment kit, which comes with arthritis, hearing impairment and tremor. That's great to set up more stations, 
We have a hemoplegia simulator. We have some geri medication simulation. So a lot of different geriatric related simulators that you could use to set up some more stations if you have those items. Another best practice is to do a group experience when you can. Whenever students can experience this, this together, it enriches the conversation um, to compare how each is feeling and things like that. So, you know, many of the lessons include those, those tasks to perform um, with, with using different parts of the suit. And when you're able to get um, groups of students doing it simultaneously, it's, it's very enriching. So we, we encourage you to do that whenever possible. Now we recommend wearing the geriatric simulator for a minimum of 20 minutes during class time to get that full idea of what it's like to be a geriatric patient. Now, if you have multiple simulators, uh, you could even extend a, a time a little longer if you wanted. Um, we don't recommend sending this home with students for that type of experience, but we do have some instructors that use it as a um, extra credit if students wanna sign it out and wear it for a little bit longer uh, period of time for, for uh, time in school. So, and then they can journal about their experience after the fact. There are many activities in the curriculum that align to those common core state standards for English language arts. And you can use these to teach important research, writing and speaking skills. You could work with your language arts colleagues on some interdisciplinary units if you'd like. Health occupations and SPACs teachers could even um, use the geriatric simulation experience to teach caregiving sensitivity across the lifespan and in related occupations. So you can certainly uh, use this as a way to teach across um, more than one area in, in your in your school. Field trips, use this Jerry experience to help extend that. So we've had several instructors tell us that they do field trips to local nursing homes and assisted living facilities for close up looks and experience with geriatric care. Now students prior to going on the field trip could wear the geriatric simulator, gain that sensitivity and empathy and understanding prior to the field trip. Then your students can act, ask patients about their experiences, or they can even talk to caregivers of what it's like in the life of, of an older person that they're caregiving for. So there's lots of ways you can extend that field trip experience with the use of a suit like this. Now we know with uh, COVID times, we haven't been able to get into those <clears throat> types of facilities, but hopefully that day will come soon where students will be able to interact uh, more easily with that type of experience again. <clears throat> Journaling is really an excellent way for students to reflect on any experience. We have an, uh, an instructor tell us that <clears throat> they gave students the geriatric simulator to wear off and on for several days and then journal about it um, each day of the experience to document what they're thinking and feeling. Again, we're not recommending that you wear the, the simulator multiple days, but you can have your students go through that simulation, do those physical tasks, and write about the experience afterward. In fact, in the, in the curriculum, there's a rubric that's included um, for that type of activity. So we hope we've given you some ideas on just how to use and maximize your, your use of the geriatric simulation suit in your program. We've got a few other free resources we like to uh, point out. We do have a Reality Works blog, and many times we have uh, guest writers and instructors sharing some ideas, uh, classroom ideas. You might find that interesting. We are very um, busy and engaged on all of our social media, including Facebook and Twitter. We also do have some free webinars and many of them are specific to geriatric topics. Um, you can register for upcoming free webinars at this link and you can also find any webinars we've done in the past saved as archives and you can just uh, scroll through them and play on demand any any uh, related topics. And like I said, there are several out there on uh, geriatric related topics. If you have any more questions or on the use of the geriatric simulator or any of the products in our geriatric line, you can reach out at our 800 number, or you can certainly write us at information at realityworks.com as well. Thank you very much.